Well, the one New Zealand Warriors put on a convincing performance against the North Queensland Cowboys last round, winning in the heat of Townsville, but now they're uh, finally coming home to their uh, sentimental home, which of course is Mount Smart Stadium, to take on the Bulldogs. Uh, SENZ, we will have live commentary on Sunday with Sammy Hewitt and Tony Kemp uh, from 3pm. Uh, but joining me now this morning is the Warriors assistant coach, uh, Richard Agar, who's brought a wealth of knowledge with him to the club. So let's find out more uh, about uh, what Richard's been thinking about the start to the season. Uh, to the season, Richard, thank you for joining us. Oh, good morning, guys. Thanks for inviting me in. Good man. How heading? It's been good. Heading into round four, it feels like yep. uh, the Warriors, um, on evidence of what we saw towards the end of last year, are finding ways to improve each game. Well, where are the coaching staff um, satisfied in terms of the trajectory at this point? Yeah, pretty satisfied. I think I think we're fully aware that uh, while we've had a long pre-season, there's consistently going to be areas that, that I guess we haven't touched on and uh, being able to improve week on week when we come across different scenarios, uh, get different feedback from the players uh, is all part of that journey for us at this moment in time. Uh, you know, we had 16 week pre season, uh, was very valuable to us. But I think you get to a point pre season where no matter how much you train, it's only when you get to go live in it, you know, in the heat of battle where you get to have a look at your combinations, some of the changes that we've made, how they hold up under pressure. And I think, I think, you know, the trial games were really valuable for us. Uh, we got off to a positive start, and, and I think it's, um, sort of a bit of an endorsement for some of the, I guess, some of the systems that our head coach has tried to implement and, and the belief that the guys have got in them at this moment in time. Well, that's an interesting point uh, you raised there, Richard, because those of us that were watching uh, towards the uh, end of stages of last season noticed a real problem we all thought, and the, even the head coaches said, with attitude, players not even really wanting to be out there. Um, what yep. are you seeing? Uh, what are you seeing about um, the attitude, um, you know, particularly during the week as much as game time, about the squad that you've got? Yeah, good question. Uh, and obviously, I, I knew last year I was joining the Warriors, and, and like yourselves, I was watching those games. But I think it's you know it's been a fresh start for everyone. You know, the line was drawn pre-season, and everyone was going to get uh, get an opportunity to get the best foot forward. And I would. I can only say what I see and say uh, we've had terrific buying from the players. I think it does help when um, I guess some of the things we've tried to implement uh, have worked for us and have held up under pressure and, and created that belief. And I think there's also been a, an influx, if you like, of experienced players that have definitely helped out in terms of leading the way. And, and I'm seeing a very... Uh, you know, a group that's very on board with each other at this moment in time. We know that that's going to get challenged during the year. It always does. You know, we always come up against uh, defeats and performances that you don't want, that, that sort of challenge you on that point. But at the moment, I think it's been there for all to see because within the games, you know, we've, we have been challenged and we've been under some adversity. But I think I think our spirit and our effort has really shown through. And even if there's parts of our performance that, you know, we would like to be better or certainly better for longer periods. I think, you know, the resilience the resilience that they've underpinned the performances with has been, actually been a shining light uh, for us so far. Well, one of the good things of, as well, Richard, of course, is this is uh, yeah. this has all happened away from home, basically. You've, you've had uh, a home game, but yeah. uh, you have not had a Mount Smart opener. And so uh, what about the levels of anticipation uh, around the, the lads for this week? Uh, through the roof. I will say we've been to Christchurch and, and Wellington in a trial game and, and obviously for a competition game. Uh, the support that we've had from people in, in those cities have been fantastic. Uh, again, as an English guy coming in here, I've been like a tourist. It's been amazing to see all these different places in New Zealand and, and the reception that we've got. Um, but as you said, Mount Smart is, is the club's spiritual home. I think the ticket sales uh, have been pretty good with, with a number of days to go before kickoff. Um, you know, Mount Smart, as we all know, you know, and again, I'm talking as a rugby league fan here, uh, some real memorable occasions, iconic occasions. Dean Bell walking out for the first game, the, the homecoming last year, where I think there probably wouldn't be a rugby league fan that didn't have goosebumps. So, so to have the positive start that we've had and get out in front of what is hopefully a, 
you know, a buzzing stadium at the weekend. I think everybody's mm. really looking forward to it. But what? But one other thing we do know is we just can't rely on that to get us home. You know, the the support will definitely be a factor for us and really help us. But you know, we we've got to make it happen too. One of the other things, of course, that that had to happen was um, uh, with yourself coming in, Andrew Webster, of course, coming in at the helm. Yep. It's also important, you know, coaches have personalities. How is that yep. all, um, coming together? How's that meshed in so far from your point of view, Richard? Yeah, well, it's been an easy one for myself. I've, I've had a, a long-standing relationship with Andrew uh, and his brother as well over over a long period of time. So, So for me, part of the... Uh, I guess excitement about joining the Warriors with the opportunity to work alongside Andrew. Uh, I think, you know, even for a young guy who's been coaching a long, long time, he'd, he'd had the experience at the Warriors, which I think would stand him uh, in good stead about knowing what to expect when he got into Auckland. Um, and he's a guy that's just come off a, a really successful couple of years being part of Penrith staff team. So um, you can imagine some of the detail around what Andrew's tried to implement is, you know, I, I would say, absolutely at the at the cutting edge of the game. Uh, you know, he's a very confident coach and knows what he wants, and he's, he's quite happy to hold, you know, everyone and anyone accountable to to get the jobs done too. So uh, we've also got Stacey Jones and Justin Morgan that have obviously been at the club for a while as well. So I feel like we've got uh, a good balance. You know, we, we always say we want to go on tired but happy. And I think uh, we've been getting that at the moment. We've really enjoyed the rapport that we've had with our, uh, you know, the, our respective units and the guys that we coach. Um, and as a group, uh, we have time every week where we spend time, I guess, brainstorming and flashing ideas out and, uh, and tossing stuff around in a room, and I think that's been really productive with us. And so, so getting on at work and off the field too uh, has made it, you know, so far a really enjoyable experience for us all. I'd say. Richard, uh, one of the words associated with uh, the Warriors is uh, culture. It always has been, probably always yep. will be. Uh, but I can't think of two more diverse cultures uh, than South Auckland and Yorkshire. <laughs> Tell us, tell us about. <laughs> I've, look, mate, I, I've been to Leeds. I've, I've been to Leeds. I've been out in Leeds. Um, I've tasted quite a lot of uh, life in Leeds, uh, and I can't yeah. think of a place more far removed. How, how are you finding the fit? Hey, seriously, I've spent plenty of time on that Western Terrace too, watching Test matches <laughs> at cricket. So, uh, you know, culturally, that can prepare you for uh, a lot of things. Uh, um, mate, I've really enjoyed it. I've, I've, I've worked in Australia uh, a couple of times before. Uh, I've been to Australia many times, but I've not actually been to New Zealand in all, all my time in rugby league. But I found it a really cool city. Uh, the people have been wonderful. Um, and it's an experience that so far I'm enjoying. Uh, part of the cultural diversity uh, with Outstanding Tucon here were, were a big factor for me. You know, I, I was keen to experience. Um, you know, a different country, different cultures, different ways of life. And I just find it, you know, very enriching as an individual that sport gives you the opportunity to do that. Uh, so rugby aside, um, that that will play a big part in my decision making, uh, as well as the fact that I thought it was a good time to join the Warriors. You know, they were coming back home. The slate was clean. Uh, I knew Andrew really well. I felt the club were about to, about to embark on a, on a journey that has been, you know, pretty exciting to be part of. Uh, at the same time, Cynthia, I'm not going to lie, we knew the challenges. You know, we knew the challenges, mm. and um, for all the good parts about joining the Warriors, there, there's some parts that you know during the course of the year um, it's going to be challenging and a little bit more difficult than some clubs do have it. But but that didn't, you know, that didn't phase us one bit. We were like, come on, let's let's have a red hot crack at this. Yeah. Uh, hey, Richard, take us inside on, on game day. Take, take us inside the coach's box. What are you specifically looking at as you look down on the action? Uh, so we've done it a little bit differently, Smith, this year. We we don't do attack and defence as coaches. Uh, having a new coach coming in and having so many changes, Andrew's got the look over both attack and defence. And, and you might think, well, does that create him too much workload? I think, no, uh, it's really important at this stage uh, as I was saying earlier, there's so many things that we didn't get covered in pre-season that come up week by week. 
you know, Andrew has the overall say and an overarching look over that. Uh, between myself, Justin and Stacey, we cover off different parts. So uh, I'll have a look at the edges. Justin will have a look at the middles. And Stacey looks after uh, what we call the transition element of the game, which I guess is, uh, you know, kicking and receiving and uh, around last plays. Um, so between us, we, we have eyes for our respected areas. Uh, and little bits of ownership around parts of our game plan, um, and we all, as I say, we all feed in. We all feed into the head coach. Uh, but yeah, it's quite a calm coach's box. I think we've all been in coach's box in any sport where it's mental and everybody, <laughs> everybody's carrying on and uh, there's brain explosions and uh, a lot of heightened tension and anxiety. But we're a relatively calm box. Uh, Time and measured and delivered at this moment in time. I'll say, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get challenged throughout the year. Terrific amount of interest, as you can imagine, uh, about um, the Warriors. Uh, we get yep. texts in all the time. For instance, Sainz come in this morning and said, "Can you please ask Richard why they've gone for Ciro at 15 over Josh Curran? Seems odd that they left him out because of injury. Plays a full game in New South Wales Cup, then uh, left out this weekend. I mean, those decision." type things that you have to make around selection. In that case, what, what's happened there? Yeah, oh, look, I, I think, yeah, I can answer that one. Um, I think a head coach, if, if things are going all right, he's always going to be challenged with decisions, uh, certainly around team selection. If we've got 20,000 fans there at the weekend, you're going to have to understand you're going to get 20,000 different opinions on the makeup of the team as well. Uh, but I think we have to trust our coach in what he's seeing day in, day out, and what he's looking for from the team. Uh, and I think uh, he's let Josh know that there's just a couple of areas that he'd like Josh to be a bit more consistent in and, and better and, and go away and work on, on that. And, and he's done that and shown a terrific attitude. Uh, and going into last week, I think there were also a, a little bit of a, I guess, a, a versatility factor in in picking Bailey Sinanen. You know, he did spend some time on both edges, but also at Dummy Half too, uh, because, you know, we didn't want to take Dylan Walker out of that, that middle role that he's been so effective on. Um, so versatility certainly came into it. Uh, but I think it's good for us if we're getting, you know, we're getting those sort of decisions where you know you've got good players, um, maybe not in the team and... Um, because of you know because of little bits of form reasons, so uh, you know it's all always going to be a a matter of a matter of opinion. Um, but I don't think at this moment in time, at this stage of the season, it's you know it's too much to worry about. I think you know everybody's going to get a, a decent crack at it, and you know throughout the year your squad is going to be fully utilised to the whole, especially at the moment with the concussion rules where, where again, we've got a player ruled out this week. Yeah, of course. Uh, that player is Wade Egan. So uh, how's yeah. Freddie? Uh, Freddie Lissick uh, looking in training uh, in terms of fulfilling the role because Wade's been very good to start the season. Wade's been great. You know, he's a, I think he's a vastly underrated player in the competition. He's been, you know, he's had three pretty outstanding performances too. So that's, you know, that's going to be a significant loss for us. But at the same time, uh, Freddie's coming in. He's just on the back of two man of the match performances in reserve grade. He's had a strong preseason where he's absolutely led the way from a from a fitness perspective. Uh, so it's a good opportunity for Freddie and, and one that you know we're pretty excited about seeing how he goes. Well, uh, Wayne, I, I could talk to you all morning because uh, one, I love the accent. I love that Yorkshire accent. Got me great, <laughs> so great, great, great memories. But um, hey, mate, we've run out of time. You, you, your answers have been so damn good. I've got a whole page of questions, which means we're going to have to call you again at some stage in the future. Congratulations, uh, congratulations no worries, on what you've achieved so far. Uh, the feel about the club and the vibe about the the Warriors at the moment is so damn good compared to twelve months ago. I promise you. Um, so well done, and thanks for your time this morning, mate. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's great to hear, guys, to get that feedback, and hopefully we can, you know, we can keep it up. Yeah, good on you, man. Uh, have a good week. Uh, good luck against the Bulldogs. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.